Hey, it's Steve here and welcome back. We're gonna talk about this uh, Two Trees TTC 450. And the reason is because even if you have a diode laser or a CO2 laser today, at some point you're going to want a CNC machine. Trust me. Now what you'll notice when you start shopping for these is there's really kind of two silos you can be in. The first is that low end range and we're talking about 3018 machines. They tend to run anywhere from $150 up to maybe three, $400. If you do a little research, you'll discover that those are not machines you want. They're actually really poor quality. Uh, the, the spindles in them are really underpowered and uh, they're just not great machines. So I would definitely not recommend the low end. The problem is the other, the other silo that you can be in is the high end. And those are machines that are in the over $2,000 range. And we're talking about things like Shapokos and, and Onefinities, and there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, I personally have a Onefinity, and it was, uh, I think when I bought it, around $3,000. I think they're a little bit more now due to our uh, unquestionable inflation. And I'm definitely happy with it, but the problem is that's a big commitment. So what you're gonna end up looking at is probably the ideal sweet spot if you're just getting started of something in the middle. What you'll discover is there really aren't a lot of good machines in that range. Now this two tree CNC is, is one of the few in that range that uh, actually looks okay. It's around $500, uh, 550 to start and goes up to around seven, 750. So decent price range and uh, you know, it's got a reasonable workspace. Uh, those 3018s are really small, 30 centimeters by, by 18 centimeters. Uh, this machine is 450 in each direction, 450 millimeters. So a foot and a half, basically, if you're in, in uh, the Imperial world, you know, really good, really good size, not too big, not too small. So you can do most of the jobs. Now in this video, we'll talk about this one. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the assembly, but I won't show you the assembly. And the reason I'm going to talk about the assembly is because it was a bit of an adventure. Uh, I'll show you definitely what the output looks like. Uh, it, it's actually a pretty decent engraving machine when, it, when you get it set up. And uh, I'll talk about some of, the, some of the definitely pros of this machine, why you'd want one. Uh, but there are reasons why you might want to be cautious and we'll talk about those. There's nothing really earth shattering here. Uh, from the negative side, but I did run into some problems and I really want to make sure you appreciate those. All right, before we carry on here, I figure I owe it to you to uh, be upfront about some of the assembly challenges. Uh, they claim that this, this uh, CNC is 70% assembled uh, when you take it out of the box. I think that's a bit of a dubious claim uh, because you're still going to invest at least three hours to put the rest of it together. So. Uh, you know, your mileage may vary, but that isn't the problem. The, the problem, there's a, the problems start when you're, when you're looking at either the online manual or, or the actual physical printed paper. And both, both assembly guides are actually pretty questionable. They're, there's errors in them. They're not complete. Uh, the video, uh, assembly guide is probably the best one. You can find it on, on two trees, uh, YouTube channel. Uh, however, I did see a couple of places in there where there were some problems as well. So were differences between when they made the video and the actual machine. Uh, so problem number one out of the way, be prepared to, to do some, some guessing because you're going to run into places where the manual doesn't tell you. Uh, the next problem I ran into was the Y axis, both the left and right side. Uh, it's basically a screwdriver on the end of a stepper motor and uh, they have those, those side plates and on those plates, there's a roller. There's actually six rollers and they run in the slot of the 8040 extrusion. And there's a bolt that holds them in a couple of spaces on either side of the plate and then a lock nut. Now, what I noticed when I put it together and I had the uh, help of, uh, you know, good buddy, Ted, he wanted to see how it was put together. Uh, he had his, his head scratching too. Um, because as you move the gantry, uh, it was binding up and it was literally stopping. Uh, and it, I, we gave up the first, the first day after those three hours, it was basically together, but we had this problem. And then I did a little more thinking about it. And the next day I, I came back into my shop and I looked at it and I realized that those bolts holding the rollers on weren't actually tight. 
So the, the lock nuts were actually sticking out a little more than they should and the tolerances inside, inside that can, case between the shield on the, on the outside and, and the extrusion on the inside, the tolerances there are remarkably tight, like a millimeter on either side. So if everything isn't set up perfectly, uh, you're going to get this problem. Now the question is, if this was 70% assembled, how come those wheels were, were all, the bolts were very loose? Uh, you know, whatever. Uh, the lesson here is even though they say it's assembled, make sure all of those bolts are tight before you put this machine together because otherwise you'll be tearing it all apart again. Uh, anyway, enough, enough ranting about that. The one final complaint is those, those shields on the, uh, those covers on the right and left side of the gantry. Uh, the one on the left side is where the cable comes up for the, for the gantry. Uh, and that cable is rubbing against the edge of the slot and this is a piece of metal so uh, even though it's in a nylon braid it's eventually going to wear through so be prepared if you if you have one of these to make that slot just a bit wider so that it's not touching the cable. Uh, again I wouldn't have engineered it that way I would have made it ample space I know why they did it they're trying to make that hole as that slot as small as possible so that they can keep the dust out but you have to make the machine work too so uh, two trees hopefully uh, you fix this in the future now that the CNC is set up we need to be able to connect it to our computer and certainly the TTC 450 has Wi-Fi support, but I'm running a Mac and I don't have any direct Wi-Fi uh, capable software that will be able to send G-code over to the, to the machine. So what I'm going to do is use a, a piece of software called Candle. Now, if you go to the, the TTC 450 page on Two Tree site, you'll see that there's some software mentioned there, certainly Carveco and Easel, which are more design driven software they will certainly send g-code but their real focus is to be able to design so i don't have either of those but i uh, but candle does come on the sd card that ships with the cnc so i'll use that because there is a mac version of it now they also list artcam here i don't know why because artcam is long gone so maybe you still have an old copy but it's been gone for years so they should really remove that one but anyway, I'm gonna use Candle. Now, I don't, as I mentioned, have either Carveco or Easel, so I'm going to use uh, what I normally use for my other CMC machines, which is uh, VCarve from Vectric, a uh, very standard piece of software. It isn't officially supported here, but I'm gonna try and get it set up and I'll hack some kind of driver and we'll see if we can get it working. First thing I need to do now is install Candle and you can get it off of the SD card that came with, this, with the uh, TTC 450. And uh, so I've done that, I've unpacked it, I've installed it. And all I did here was uh, plug the USB cable in between my computer and the, and the CNC and I've gone and connected it and that's it. And you can see that it does say it's idle now. And if I, if I hit a button here, you can see it's jogging and it's changing the position. So we're ready to go. Uh, and uh, now we just need a design. Now I've, I popped over into VCarve Desktop, which is the, the software I use to create CNC designs. Uh, this one isn't officially supported. So what I did was I, I just created a new machine and set a uh, I picked a post processor, that's the thing that generates the G-code, uh, that generates the proper extension. Uh, this, this should work uh, and uh, we'll give it a shot. And then all I did was I created a, a, a V-carve toolpath so that we can carve out the letters. And if I go and look at what that's actually going to generate, uh, we can see if I reset this, uh, you can see it'll just do a, a carving of my name. And this piece of wood I've just pre-sized, it was a scrap of maple I found over in my, over in my bin. And uh, that's what we'll use to test this. And back over here in Candle, uh, I can now take that file and I'm just gonna drop it on here and you can see it generated some text there. And uh, all I really need to do now is uh, is start this and that's as simple as sending it. Now I mentioned there was a trick here to get the material mounted on the workspace. So what I'm gonna do is just put some tape on the workspace and uh, you can see it's just a couple of pieces of tape and then I'm gonna use some CA glue uh, on the material which I've also taped and I'm just gonna smear the glue around there a bit 
And finally, I'm gonna take some accelerant and I'm going to put it on the tape on the workspace. And then I just drop my material down there, certainly as squarely as possible. And uh, that'll be enough to hold it. Now the advantage here is that there's no clamps in the way. There's no uh, potential to mess up your workspace because we're only engraving. And uh, it just, it works really well. And time to look at the results. I, I did clean them up a little bit with a wire brush here just to, to smooth, smooth out some of the roughness. And you can see it looks really good. And just for fun, I did one in Cherry. Uh, the reason is because the font I selected there was a bit big and it actually has unengraved hollow spots in the center. So you can, it's prone to break out and stuff. It wasn't the ideal use case. Uh, anyway, I, it looks great. I'm really impressed. And I, as I'm doing these tests, I look at this and realize this uh, CNC costs about a third of the cost of my own. And I'm, I'm really impressed. All right, so where does this leave us? Well, we're gonna look at some pros and cons here. Uh, on the pro side, the dimensions of this machine are great, 460 by 460, and I believe it's 80 millimeters in height. So lots of room for, for projects, much bigger than a 3018, and not so big that you need a completely standalone bench or, or workspace for it. So it's actually reasonably portable. Uh, next on the list here, they did use some great materials. Um, it, the entire frame, everything is metal. Uh, those, those plates on the sides of the gantry that, that move the gantry up uh, forward and back, those are quarter inch aluminum, so they're, they're pretty thick, uh, definitely robust. Uh, they use uh, screw drives instead of belt drive, which is also nice. It, it's easier to keep clean. You can lube it up when you need to and, and belts kind of stretch and break on occasion. So much better there. And if you look at, at the machine, it definitely looks like you're kind of getting into that professional area. It looks very nice. Uh, now I will say it is odd that nowhere on, on this unit is there uh, a Two Trees logo or a model number. Um, they have the, all of the, the left and right side plates uh, that are really just space. Uh, they could certainly put their their uh, label there and give themselves a little credit for building a, a you know a decent CNC. Uh, and last on the list of pros here, uh, connection was really easy. I plugged USB in, I ran candle on my local machine, and everything connected. As I mentioned, there's also Wi-Fi, so if you're running uh, their Windows software uh, or a G code center on Windows that supports Wi-Fi, uh, you'll find it very easy. Now, on the con side, there were definitely some things. Uh, I mentioned the assembly. Uh, some of this is designed so that cable rubbing against the side cover, uh, I find that very odd because there's some reasonably high voltage running through there, high current at least to run the motor. And uh, eventually that's gonna wear through. So it, I wouldn't have designed it that way and it looks kind of weird. Um, I mentioned the bolts in some of the supposed 70% assembled pieces. Uh, I had to uh, tighten up because they weren't they weren't tight and they were actually causing the the gantry to jam. Uh, and finally, I, the instructions uh, there are definitely errors and gaps in the instructions. So you know it does it takes three hours. Uh, I would say at least half an hour of that is scratching your head trying to figure out how things go together. Again, the video is much better than the printed docs. Next on the list here, I did find a couple of software bugs. The worst of these was, was happened when I pushed the gantry all the way back to the rear limit switch. There was a warning on the screen to say I was at the limit, but I couldn't bounce back off the limit um, by moving the gantry forward. Uh, just. I couldn't make it happen again, but it it just seemed weird that there's a situation where you can get the thing jammed up. And uh, finally on the, on the list here, uh, there is no dust collection uh, available here. So uh, you'll have to deal with your own dust chips and, and sawdust as they're, as they're coming off the CNC uh, in your projects. Now, maybe the first project, if you have one of these is to build a dust collector, it's not really that hard. Uh, anyway, so those are the pros and cons. Nothing too serious here. Uh, as always, they could make it better, but I am really impressed at how good, for the money, how good this CNC is. 
All right, so in summary here, we have a CNC that once you managed to get it assembled, that was the biggest challenge. Uh, you end up with, a, with a, a really nice CNC that generates very high quality engraving. I didn't try cutting, uh, but uh, engraving looks very nice. You know, it's much better quality than the 3018. I was expecting that level of quality and it's much more like uh, the entry level of the higher end CNC uh, category. So uh, decent, the motor is actually very good, the stock motor. There is a 500 watt motor and I'll do a, an upgrade video on that when, when I get all the pieces for it to, to do the upgrade and that'll follow in the next week or two. You know, if you do want to compare this to say something like a, like a Onefinity, I'll put a link to a review video I did up above here. Go watch that and I'll see you over there and get out there and make your world and I'll see you next time.